Hey guys, welcome back. Over the past decade or so, I've become quite a big PC gamer, and in recent years in particular, I found myself, honestly, like barely even using my Xbox anymore. You couple my love for keyboard and mouse with the problems that Halo's been having recently, and also the extreme content drought that it's been suffering through, and you can kind of see why I never really have a reason to boot the Xbox up. Now, of course, very soon, this is all going to change, with MCC coming to PC, and then next year, Halo Infinite coming to PC, my two loves will finally be united, properly <laughs> this time. But in the infamous words of 343, MCC PC is ready when it's ready, and Infinite is, like, still well over a year away. But in the interim, we have something very interesting to tide us over. This something is Halo SPV3, a total overhaul and mod of Halo CE's campaign that adds new weapons, vehicles, missions, characters, lore, textures, animations, and pretty much anything under the sun. Almost two years ago now, they had their first official release, but recently they've had another, SPV3.2. With this new release came a whole host of new features, but what we're going to focus on today is arguably the most significant, Commander. Halo Combat Evolved's new and first ever Arbiter mission. So today, I want to talk about the Commander mission. I want to talk about its lore, what it does well, what it doesn't do so well, and then let you guys enjoy some lovely pure gameplay untainted by my voice. Capiche? Capiche. find their ship. Make short work of this abomination. We shall cut into the heart of this infestation and burn any flood that stand in our way. So, let's begin with the lore, which is hands down the strongest aspect of this new addition to Halo CE. The mission tells the tale of the Arbiter's War against the Flood on Alpha Halo. It's set on the silent cartographer island, but post-flood outbreak, so now it is heavily overrun. The Arbiter, along with Artas Badum and Utse Taham, are deployed to the island to investigate the silent cartographer. However, they're sent to the island at the dawn of the Great Schism. Tensions are starting to rise between the Brutes and the Elites, and there are some really damn cool Easter eggs in the map that relate to these tensions. More on that in a second. Because it's on the silent cartographer island, it's more of a sort of free roam-esque mission than a linear one, and honestly, the narrative complements that really well. I won't go into too much detail, but the entire narrative for the mission is essentially the backstory behind this line from Halo 2. You were right to focus your attention on the Flood, but this demon, this Master Chief... By the time I learned the demon's intent, there was nothing I could do. Taking that one simple line of dialogue and fleshing it out and having it inspire a story in a period of the Arbiter's history that's never really been told before is a super cool idea, and I love it. Having Arthas and Utse there as well not only sort of strengthens their bond together, but also adds even more to Arthas's deep history with the Flood. The enemies that you encounter also really fit the narrative as well. The sheer number of Sentinel Enforcers that are patrolling the island is a cool, yet also really intimidating indication of not only how severe the Flood outbreak is, but also how important keeping the Parasite's infection out of the cartographer is. I mean, if they gain access to the cartographer, they can locate any and all important locations on the ring. Something Spark and the Sentinels definitely don't want to happen. And then, there's the Brutes. Now, you guys know how much I absolutely adore Easter eggs in video games, and the way the Brutes are handled in this mission only makes me love them more. When you're escaping the facility at the end of the mission, you run into a huge swarm of Flood right at the end, and among them is a single Brute Chieftain. Now, of course, to many, this Chieftain will be nothing more than just another enemy to kill. But if you happen to find all the Covenant Terminals, then you'll realise that he is much more than that. These Terminals tell a really clever sub-narrative that turns this Chieftain from, like, just another NPC to kill 
into an actual character with his own motives and beliefs and struggles. It's only minor, but I'm not going to spoil it here. It's honestly so damn cool, and it's something that I want you guys to discover for yourselves. I will show all the terminal logs in this video, though, so stick around to the end of the video if you want to see this guy's backstory. So, the lore is some seriously good stuff. Also, the way that the team managed to reuse a lot of the Arbiter and Artas' dialogue from Halo 2 and Halo 3 is honestly fantastic. Like, if you haven't played either of those games, you would have no idea that these lines are being used out of context. They fit so well. The environments are mostly gorgeous as well, the beach in particular. I mean, the fact that this is in like an almost 20 year old game is absolutely baffling to me. The fact that they're able to do this with a 20 year old game engine is outstanding, honestly. Most of the encounters, I say most of the encounters, are pretty cool too. Like fighting the flood for the first time in a familiar location is actually really cool. The beach fights in particular. Some of the battles take place in different areas as well that we're not really used to. So it makes the whole island and level feel fresh, even though it's technically not fresh. However, I do want to touch on the negatives before I let you guys enjoy the rest of the gameplay. So since we were just talking about encounters, some of them really do suffer from SPV3's general issue with enemy encounters. They're simply, like, too overwhelming. The sheer number of enemies attacking you most of the time is honestly, like, just way too much and legitimately unfair, and I noticed it quite a lot during this mission. In the tighter corridors in particular, it gets to a point where it stops being challenging and frankly just starts getting annoying and not fun. It's hard to appreciate the changes and additions the team made to the enemies when the sheer number of them on screen at once makes fighting them just not fun. It's not the enemies themselves that aren't fun to fight, it's just the ridiculous amount of them that dilutes what could be an enjoyable experience. But hands down, my biggest complaint is the lighting. Now, I get on paper what the team were trying to do, but my god, some of the areas are literally pitch black. Like, so pitch black that I can't see two feet in front of me. It's, like, that dark. I think the idea was that the sword was meant to act as almost like a torch, but when you can only pull it out for 20 seconds before it goes on a 30 second cooldown, it just doesn't work. I died countless times because my sword was on cooldown and I couldn't see anything around me except for the extremely bright muzzle flashes. Again, I see what they were trying to do and, I mean, hell, I like the idea of using darkness to make the flood seem more terrifying. I actually hate the fact that newer Halo games don't utilise darkness more, but this is like, it's just way too much, frankly. I mean, thankfully though, Masters and the team are working on a fix for this that will be releasing in September at the absolute latest, so hopefully they manage to make these missions actually visible, because it's a real shame, honestly, that with all the work that went into them, you can barely see or tell what's going on half the time. Overall, I'd say that Commander is a really damn cool addition to Halo Combat Evolved story. It's a perfect example of why the modding community are such a vital part of Halo, and why I'm so happy that with MCC PC, 343 are finally going to be catering to them again. Getting to experience this part of the Arbiter's history is something that we'll likely never experience in any official form. Like, at the most, we'll get a short part of a book that covers it or something, but thanks to modding, we can actually play it. It's not perfect by any means, the two negatives that I touched on are pretty significant negatives, as I think a few others have pointed out, but if you can get past them, or at least wait till they're fixed, this mission and the narrative that it tells are really, really enjoyable. Just need that brightness fix now. I mean, apparently it's something to do with the HDR, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it doesn't take them long to fix. And so, those are my thoughts on the mission. Make sure that you stick around to see how it plays out, and also experience the ending and also sort of easter egg story that I alluded to earlier, as well, of course, as some juicy Elite on Flood action. Wait, did... did I just say what I think I said? Anyways, there's a link in the description if you want to go and download SPV 3.2 and install it. Super easy to install and definitely worth trying out, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Get away! Hold your fire! We're allies! We will not let them take us! What a god! They will the parasite has journey to land!
Stand back. The mud.